All right. Sir, state your name and date of birth. Armando Jr. Hernandez, 06-28-1999. And counsel. Philip Beatty, on behalf of Mr. Hernandez, um, he is present, he is in custody. We're asking that you appoint the law office of the public defender. On a good faith basis, uh, I believe he is indigent. I did not see an affidavit that was complete. I, I, it just says that he has no response. I don't know if the staff is doing this. Mr. Hernandez, are you working at all? Working, yes, I am. Okay. Did you discuss his finances at all? I did mm -hmm. discuss it with him. He works in construction where a case of this magnitude, I think it would be hard pressed for anybody to be able to afford uh, defense in okay. these charges. And you're with the um, public defender? Law office of the public defender. Okay. Yeah. I will, I will appoint the Maricopa County public defender on this matter. And then counsel for the state. Good morning, Your Honor. I'd like on behalf of the state. Okay. Sir, you're here on a Superior Court new case alleging three counts. Can you hear me enough through this? Okay. If, if you can't, please let me know, okay? Three counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Three counts of aggravated assault with serious physical injuries. Those all are class three felonies. One count of criminal damage, class four five felony, one count of recklessly damaging the property of a utility, class five felony, five counts of discharging a firearm in the city limits, class six felonies, and one count of disorderly conduct with a weapon, class six felony. Um, counsel, did you have any um, anything you wanted to say um, in terms of the probable cause finding? I do not, Your Honor. Okay. Um, counsel for the state, I did have questions on the serious physical injury. I know that at least um, in, in terms of the information I received on Forum 4, there was one in critical condition. Um, can you supplement any information about the serious physical injury um, as to the three counts of those that are alleged? Uh, Your Honor, uh, what I can tell you is that um, the victim uh, who was in critical condition uh, received a gunshot wound to the chest uh, that uh, caused uh, significant blood loss such that they, uh, at least as of approximately uh, five or six hours ago, they were not yet able to perform surgery because of uh, that blood loss that continued. Uh, hospital um, was very concerned uh, because of this in the inability to uh, stop the bleeding. Um, the, uh, one of the other uh, Victims of the of the gunshot got shot in the leg um, and has a shattered uh, tibia um, as well as fibia. And um, per the hospital, there was a uh, there was concern that at least potentially uh, there could be a loss of a limb and specifically the leg um, as as sort of a worst case scenario. And then um, the, one of the other victims um, did was also shot in the leg and uh, um, had uh, broken ribs. Okay. That's the extent of the information I have, Your Honor, specific to the medical uh, situation. Okay, those were the, the questions I had as to those charges. I did find probable cause on the other, and then with that additional information, the court does find probable cause. As I said earlier, we are going to rep uh, appoint the Maricopa County Public Defender, and then counsel, um, what would you like to tell me anything about um, the lease conditions? Your Honor, I would point out that um, Mr. Hernandez has absolutely, to the best that I've been able to research and to the short order, no juvenile or uh, any adult uh, criminal history. This is the first contact with the uh, law, with the uh, legal system. Um, he has uh, significant he ties to the entire Phoenix area, so he doesn't pose a flight risk. He has, uh, he was living with his dad and brother. I can't confirm whether he can go back there yet because I've just met with him, but we do know that he had 
a stable housing situation. He was working in construction. He may even be able to go back there. Um, he is, uh, he's also got some other family members that are in the area uh, that I'm going to attempt to, to contact. So he is, uh, we believe that uh, um, given the fact that he has no previous history, he should be allowed to, uh, to return to the community and live in a, in a situation where he has the, his uh, stable family. Okay, counsel for the state. Your Honor, um, the, uh, uh, Mr. Hernandez, um, in his interview, uh, expressed the desire uh, and to um, commit mass casualties. Um, he specifically was hoping to shoot at least 10 people um, this was not a, a gun accidentally going off. This was Mr. Hernandez had the purpose of uh, taking out his um, expressed anger at society, uh, the feeling that he has been um, bullied, the feeling that um, women don't want him. He is a uh, self-professed incel, uh, which uh, means he's involuntary or claims he's involuntarily celibate and is was deeply angered by this in, in his interview specifically said that he was targeting couples uh, to the individuals who uh, were, are uh, gunshot victims are in fact, uh, it, it appears they were a couple. Um, he wanted these people to feel the pain that he feels on a daily basis. He suffers from uh, extreme anger. He described, and he was very open about the fact that he has a dark side, and his dark side was coming out. The community would be at a dramatic risk from someone who said that he was caught, he'd been contemplating a mass casualty or mass shooting, specifically at Westgate, for at least three or four years. He indicated that um, he had gone, he was very angry yesterday, had told the family that he was going to go to the gym, in fact, then went to try to go to Panda Express to get some dinner, was not able to get it uh, for some reason. This angered him even more. He then drove to Westgate. Uh, again, with an AR-15 and three 30-round um, magazines in the back, uh, he wasn't sure exactly what he was going to go there, do there, but he made some calls to try and talk to some friends. They didn't respond. He grew even more angry. Uh, then he said, you know, what? I'm going to go to the movies. And the fact that the movie was not showing because of the pandemic, this sort of set him over the edge, as he said last night, and he proceeded to then live stream aspects of uh, what he called himself the Westgate shooter. Uh, this presents such a dramatic uh, threat to the community, Your Honor, that, um, that the state uh, would be asking for uh, a substantial bond. Uh, before I give that, just a little more information for your honor. Okay, um, let's just address the bond at this point. Yes, your honor. Um, the state would be asking for a million dollar cash bond. Um, he did, he has a dramatic inability to control any of his motions. Um, I, I think it's important for your honor's consideration that um, he was not shy during the live streaming, which incidentally he had sent to a girl that he was interested in. He sent the live streaming of him shooting, um, bragging about it. Um, when he shot at least a couple of the individuals, he said to one of them after he shot them, do you want fries with that? And then uh, one of the other individuals who he shot, Your Honor, I'm he gonna said, have to okay. he's, he's introducing shoot. evidence, none of which has been provided to me. I'd ask that you strike most of what Mr. Leiter has said all I have is the Form 4, and he is able to now, uh, he's presenting evidence that we haven't had an opportunity to review. Yes. So at this point, I think his argument needs to be limited to what's in the Form 4. Well, I think he can expand um, more than the Form 4, as the court did need additional information for probable cause. But, Mr. Leiter, can you, um, as to the conditions that the court needs to um, look at in terms of his ties to the community, danger to community, is there anything else that you'd like to tell the court? Um, just a moment, Your Honor. The, uh, Mr. Hernandez 
and this is clear in the Form 4, had such a deep-seated anger that the only way that he could express that anger was to take it out on as many citizens who were just minding their business at Westgate as possible. He stated, as the Form 4 states, that he had 90 rounds that he intended to use, but for the gun jamming, those would have been used, as opposed to one person in critical condition and two other gunshot victims, we would have been looking at many more and very likely several individuals dead. There isn't a scenario where the community would be safe with the defendant out of custody. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, and I'm going to let you respond to that. Yes, Your Honor, and limited to the Form 4, if this court is inclined to impose a bond, a million dollars is utterly ridiculous. I handle cases in various units within our, or in our capital unit, and this is, as well as our regular homicides and in our sex cases, this is utterly ridiculous amount of bond that they're suggesting for a first-time offender. It needs to be taken into consideration, the situation, as I mentioned earlier. We'd ask that if you do set a bond, you'd set it something that the family, if they put up the house, something along those lines, so they have some skin in the game, that they will be looking out and watching over him if he were to be on release, so that there is a substantial penalty if he were to re-offend or do anything while he's in the community, which seems unlikely. So a bond should be set that's commensurate with something that the family can post, rather than set it at $1 million, which is effectively setting no bond. It's essentially making him non-bailable, in which case we need to have an evidentiary hearing to determine whether or not that he poses the future dangerousness, and that there are no other terms of release that would likely be effective. Okay, and counsel, I think my staff had indicated that you wanted to know what the recommendations were from pretrial services, is that correct? That's correct. I'd ask to see whatever was presented to you, but they were... No, I can... This is all new for all of us, so I'm not pointing anything. Yeah, I can tell you that with these charges, it takes him out of it, but the failure to appear score is between 1 and 6, he came up as a 1. New criminal activity score is a 1 to 6, he came up as a 2, but the final recommendation, because of the deadly weapon, is a max recommendation, okay? Just so you know that, that that is what I see from here, and I am going to do a $1 million cash bond. Your next court appearance... ...is going to be a preliminary hearing on May 28th at 8.30. Okay, anything from either counsel? No, Your Honor, thank you. No, Your Honor. Okay. Do you have his paperwork here? Sign for it and get your paperwork. Okay.